Hi folks, this is Sarv Jijahal coming to you from Mobile World Congress 2025. Today I am talking to Mr. Sanjay Upal, who is the VP and GM of Software Defined Edge Division, uh, which is called VeloCloud, uh, which is part of Broadcom. With that said, Sanjay, thanks for your time. Absolutely. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll jump into the, the new announcement uh, to start with. Yep. So you guys announced today yep. the new um, offering. Shed some light on that, what it is, and how it came to be. Yeah. So very nice to be here and chatting with your audience. Thanks. Um, as you pointed out, we are the VeloCloud division of Broadcom. And what we are announcing today at the Mobile World Congress is a new offering called VeloSky. Now, what VeloSky is, is an offering for convergence for telecom operators. And convergence means that if you have a 5G connection or a satellite connection or a wired connection, you can all make them look like one connection for their customers. Now, typically, we'll, we would think of convergence more from a business perspective. That is, you get one bill and your TV and your mobile and everything is on that bill. But what here we are talking about is technological convergence. Because the businesses really don't want to care about, am I running on MPLS or am I running on broadband or am I running on fiber or 5G or satellite? They simply want their applications to work. True. And the important applications, they want to work all the time. The not so important applications, like if somebody is in a retail store and they are streaming Netflix, that's not as important as the point of sale or the inventory application or the merchandising application. So what we've done is we've built VeloSky for being a convergence products on an application by application basis. So if you're a telecom operator, you can sell a service to your customers and say, this is a converged offering for your most important applications. And the telecom operator can charge more for that convergence because it will ensure through an SLA that the most important applications will work the best. And then the less important applications are prioritized lower. Now, convergence prior to VeloSky has not happened on an application basis. Mm -hmm. You can still converge and do active backup. Right? People say that if your wired connection goes away, you back up to the 5G. But we are talking about using all of the connections all of the time mm -hmm. on the basis of individual applications. That is the power of VeloSky. That's all, that's awesome. Actually, the I think the key is the application to city, right? Yes. And if you can double click on that, that would be great because the applications are under a big change with uh, Gen AI coming into the picture. Correct. And developer persona is changing, if you will, um, and also the application mix will change as well. Yes. So, so how we write software, of course, changes, but how we use software, um, how the bits are retrieved from the, you know, storage, it changes as well. Yes. Right. So what is Gen AI? So shed some light on that part. Like what is the application specificity in, in the age of AI and uh, how it will help uh, your customers. Yeah, it's an extremely pertinent question because just in the last year or so, the nature of applications, everything from development to consumption has been changing quite dramatically, especially for Gen AI. So this new class of applications are going to be agentic. Yeah. And what's going to happen is that it's not just simply a client-server interaction that we are used to. Even a chatbot talking to an LLM is really a client-server interaction. True. But what's happening with this next class of applications is that they're going to be agentic. So the application itself is going to decompose into a number of agents. And these agents need to talk to one another. Now, if all the agents are situated in one data center or in one rack or on one computer, it's not very interesting because then you could have written it as one application. Yes. But these agents, depending on where the data is and where the human beings are, they're essentially distributed. So now you can think of, in the retail case, an agent that is sitting in the distribution center, an agent that is sitting in the warehouse, an agent that is sitting in the retail store, in the headquarters, and all these agents talk to one another. So if you walk into a retail store, the first thing that will happen is that the agent will recognize you. Yeah. Will say, okay, this is Sarbjeet, and when did you come in last? What is your purchasing history? What kind of products are you are you likely to buy today? And are those products available in the store? Are they on sale or not? 
all of this is going to get done automatically behind the scenes because of all these agentic interactions. Now, the really interesting part about the agentic interaction is with these new class of applications, there's a lot more information and data going upstream yeah. rather than downstream. So this flips what networks have been built for. Networks are built for a lot more downstream than upstream, but agentic interactions with Gen AI, they flip it. And once you flip it, then the networks are going to be under a lot of pressure, which is why you need products like Velo Sky and Velo Cloud that really accommodate for understanding the application and then configuring the network in real time to respond to these demands of agentic and more upstream. So you touch upon some that the, the capabilities in the new platform, they will help the, the telcos have better SLAs, so that means they can do better pricing or they can right. charge more, right? Yep. Is that in, in terms of availability or the the or, or the or the performance or what parts of the SLA do you think that it will change? Yeah, so what's important in the SLA is application level QoS, okay. application okay. level quality of service, which yeah. then translates into how the quality of experience is going to be for the human being that is starting this interaction. So what the telco is able to say that for the highest quality of service, they will be able to charge more. Now, you know, there's this concept from a technology perspective called slicing. Yes, yes, where yes. the telecom operators say that they can set up network slicing. The network slicing that has been done to date is quite static. So people will say that there's a network slice as an example for first responders. Yes. So this is a slice for all of the first responder communication and they charge more for it. But what we are saying is that instead of doing this just in this static fashion, you can configure a slice dynamically for specific applications. So you can say, right now I want a slice because this application for merchandising is very important. Yeah. But I don't want it five, five minutes from now, or I don't want it once the application goes away. So this capability of doing dynamic slicing on an application layer allows the telecom operator to set up an SLA for that application running on any type of network that they have underneath. This really frees the telco from doing a lot of network-based configuration and reconfiguration. Of course, if the network slice is available, we can use it. But even if it is not available, we can set up an application level slice. And that is very pertinent to the businesses and enterprises that use these networks because they think of it as applications. They don't think of the bits and bytes that are running on the network. Cool. It's really the telecom operators that have to do that and we help them in doing it. That's awesome. So yeah, it's a, it's a network slicing. I'd say last year was a big topic as well. Yes. The dynamic sli slicing and even with the with the help of uh, Gen AI, I mean, I mean, I've seen some demos out the walking around last year. Uh, I won't name the names there, but um, like you could talk to the machine and say, for the next half an hour, I want more um, bandwidth in the stadium, yeah. and after after that, in the restaurants. Yes, area. you know, like it just changes the where the people are. The cover the, the coverage goes there. Yes. Is that, yeah, uh, now that also is somewhat static. It's a little bit better than setting up a slice for a long period of time. Uh -huh. But what if you know, you're know you a person who has paid, let's say, in the US Super Bowl, it's pretty typical to pay two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000 for a ticket. Yeah. But if you're a Gen Z person who goes to one of these, you're going there not just to watch the game, but you want to share what you're watching with all of your friends. It's true, yeah. And you want to share it on social media, and you'd much rather share it in real time. Now, if you go into one of these games and someone scores a touchdown, it's very likely that your connection is not going to be very good so that you can't share it in real time or at least not at 4K quality. Yeah. But if you were given a slice for which you paid $20, a little more, a little more, now yeah. if you paid $2,000 for the ticket, you paid $200 for parking, you can pay $20 for getting for a that. slice oh, yeah. so that you can capture when Brock Purdy has thrown a touchdown and you can share it with all of your friends. So our bet is this application level slicing that is dynamic is going to really enable the telco with dynamic tariffing to have a lot more services than just simply saying, hey, look, here's your 5G for your phone and you pay us $50 a month. So it's going to be really open up to have a lot more of services that they can provide on the fly. So that's a, that opens up a lot more new business models for yes. telcos, right? For example, uh, what I do when, when I talk on camera with uh, people like you, uh, which are industry leaders, 
um, I can get the 4K uplink yeah. uh, to the uh, to the cloud and to the streaming. And I'm willing to pay 100, 200, 300, whatever. See there? I mean, you're a professional. This is important for exactly. your business. Yeah. And, you know, and telcos have not monetized this yet because yeah. those mechanisms were not available, yeah. especially not at the application layer. Yeah, they didn't have the levers, right? They don't so, have the levers. Yeah, yeah. How about any partners getting involved in this rollout of this new capability or new offering? Uh, who's involved and um, uh, are they global or US only? Sure. So, of course, we're talking to a large number of telecom operators around. This is a new offering. Um, it's been in trial deployment for a couple of months now. But we have in our announcement that we made today, Mettel, that's an operator on the East Coast in the United States. So it's more of a national operator. They have a lot of customers, as an example, in government, but other verticals as well. So they have done an endorsement on our, uh, on our release today. And the global operator, Vodafone, has also looked at Bellow Sky and has endorsed the direction that we're going with Bellow Sky with the convergence. So we think that this is just the start because what we're doing with Bellow Sky, we think the industry is going to move in this direction of application level support and how networking can help Gen AI applications. Because this Gen AI applications, as you know, are here to stay. The agents are going to be abounding everywhere. And so the telecom operators want to have a role in this new class of applications that are coming in. And Velo Cloud, Velo Sky, Velo Rain, our AI architecture, all help them to do that. That's awesome. One actually big theme which has been sort of going up in the last few years, but this year it was more like a very stark, that the tel I, I've, I've said that many times, and I, I talk on the Cube many times as well, but that, that telcos have to work with the big tech yeah. Um, to software enable their business, you know, like they they're weak on the software side, right? Yeah. And likes of Broadcom, Valor Cloud, VMware, all these stacks are purely software driven, right? Correct. So, how do you see this transition of telcos into more like a tech cos, if yeah. you will? Yeah. So this has been a trend that has been going on for a few years. Um, it's no secret that the telecom industry from a return of capital, return on invested capital, has not done well compared to, yeah. let's say, the hyperscalers, the cloud, even software. Yeah. Right? So they have been under both regulatory pressure as well as in terms of pricing. When you're just simply in the, in the realm of selling bits, yeah. then you can't, you can't break out of it. But there's some really forward-leaning people out there who recognize that this shift from telco to techco needs to happen. And how it needs to happen is they become much more software-oriented businesses. Yeah. Now, that part of software orientation comes in two parts. The first part is the infrastructure itself, yeah. where to roll out a service, it used to take so long to get the service rolled out because it was much more that the vendors that they would rely on gave them proprietary monolithic platforms. But when partners like VMware and, and others come in, then they make these platforms become much more horizontal so that you can mix and match. You can put different services on top, you can have different underlay networks underneath. So that virtual, effectively virtualization changes the game and it makes it much more software enabled. And the telecom operators have understood this. They're well on their path to decentralize and virtualize their underlying infrastructure so that they can make it a lot more efficient. But the second part of this is so that they can roll out services a lot faster. And so our example of you know, VeloSky and how they can roll out application layer QoS and services on the fly through application slicing, this is an example of using software not just to make their networks more efficient, but to roll out services a lot faster. Services that people will pay for. Like you pointed out how you would pay $100, $200 for a faster upstream. Yeah, yeah. We think that there are hundreds or thousands of such services that telecom operators can monetize to both retail customers, meaning consumers, as well as to businesses. And we're just at the beginning point of doing that. So to round it out, it's really software that is going to help these telecom operators to make the leap into becoming techcos and they have this network orientation, which is so important and valuable because you cannot think of these Gen AI applications that are running across the, across the world um, without the network. 
Yes, so no network, no Gen AI. Definitely, yeah, that's so <laughs> true. And, 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 the, and the last thing I want to so touch upon is on the technical side, um, technical in nature. So the the multimodality of the models, right, that plays into this as well, right? Absolutely. Because video is heavy. 100%. And then you want almost real-time interpretation of those that video, if you will, and on-the-fly translations and in the stores and in the in the stadiums and, and so many businesses. Absolutely. That you know, I, this this is my Ray-Ban Meta glasses. Mm -hmm. These glasses do live streaming in the upstream direction. So when I put them on, I can take a picture. I can do video. They also do live translation. So if you're talking in Punjabi, then yeah. I can listen to it in English. Yeah, yeah. Now you think of this. This is sending a lot more data in the upstream direction than there is in the downstream True. direction. True. So you know, video. Uh, is one example of multi-modality yeah. because video is going in the upstream direction but in the enterprise use case also because of RAG yeah. and because of pre-training sure. and fine-tuning there's a lot more information going in the upstream direction that again is multimodal. There is video, there is audio, there are large documents going upstream yes. and you have to also control those documents from a security standpoint. You don't want security to be compromised because data is leaking from the enterprise in the upstream direction. Mm -hmm. And that's again where Velo Cloud comes in because we are able to understand the nature of the data and then block the data that does not need to need leave to the there. enterprise. So multimodality, RAG, more upstream, these are all related to this problem that we've been talking about, which is how Gen AI applications are going to change the nature of networking and how the telcos can respond. Yeah, that's a B2B use cases and in B2C use cases, it can be applications uh, like um, small ISVs are producing, uh, you know, like yeah. mobile apps. Um, they can make tons of money from that, and then telcos can benefit from that. Absolutely. And in the enterprise space, um, you just gave me an example. But that's it. Uh, thanks, Sanjay, for your time. Absolutely. Uh, it has been a pleasure talking to you, and I look forward to another opportunity to talk to you. Great. Thank you, and thanks to all your audience as well. Yeah. Thank you for listening and. Uh, Stay tuned for more. Thanks.